let's record process of Fritex, of creating a Fritex invoice. Um, let's click OK. All right, so let's navigate to all the Fritex invoices in AR. Let's um, create a new one. As you see in the upper right corner, we have three actions. The list will be increased step by step. So whenever we do in AX, every action, every interaction with the system will be recorded and saved as a step uh, to later on um, basically change those values. So one of the biggest, uh, the greatest advantage is uh, the reusability of the script. I will show you that in a second. And this will be our entire process containing 25 steps, 26 even. Um, okay, so I have 27 steps. Uh, I will stop this, this script. So those are all steps that I've been through and I'm able to uh, see what kind of actions I recorded. So I went through all three text invoices. Then I picked customer from the dropdown list from the lookup uh, and it is defined here. Then we have description field. Then we have main account field, add line, second description, etc. So if I don't want to change this process, I can just compile and compile it will create the first version of my recording. And I can run it and see how system will interact without my help. So this is how you can record the process. And later on, I will show you how to how easy how easy it is to change those values we use. So right now, system will reproduce step by step exactly how we've done the process. On the right side, we have the execution progress, which identifies where we are, how many steps we already uh, went through, and um, estimate how much time we need to, uh, to end this. Left up corner, it's a panel to let me stop or pause or basically go step by step with the process. And uh, on the bottom, we have some shortcuts again to use. So let's wait for the end of the execution. And after the execution, we will receive a log which will specify if there was any error, any warning or any failure inside of the process. And as you see in the logs, we have uh, those check marks. The last execution is ours, the one which we just uh, observed in the system. And we have check mark, which means that a process went all right. There was no, uh, no issue with that. And um, we can just wait for, uh, for another execution. If you will have a warning, this will, uh, this will appear, or failure, we will see something like this. And if you have uh, failures, I, I mean by this, your, your process is failing at some point, and you have info log which will pop out, you will see the same info log here, and then by double clicking, I can dive into uh, AOT and start debugging the process. So this will help you identify the issues, it will help you to save exact info log which was going on, the, uh, which was visible in the process, and um, you'll have a proof that something is missing or something is wrong. Mm -hmm. But if nothing nothing happens, the check mark will identify that the process is uh, is correct. And again, we have um, the description of the action. We have start on start and date, uh, start start and end time, um, which give us the milliseconds the number of milliseconds needed to do uh, the process, to go through the process. I can identify some bottlenecks, and if the time of the execution will be exceeded, I can observe it and match this as a, like a boundary, which will, be, um, which will be checked by the system within execution. So this is the first execution of the script, and I saw that basically um, nothing was wrong. But let's say um, I want to deactivate some steps, like those two. They are they are referenced with lookup with uh, the interaction with the system, and um, we picked the US 14 as a customer. I can click here and pick something else like US 21. I can take uh, and define different description value. Let's say it was implementation, right now it will be service. And at the end, we have the second line, which is test. And um, what is important, uh, whenever we are uh, editing a field, like in here, a data field description, uh, we can define a constant value, which would be like here, test. I can take variable, so I can take value from 
uh, from previous actions and insert it here. Or I can take value set. So I can take a random value from, let's say, customer table or any table that it is in the system. So I can create a uh, free text invoice or sales order for random customer in the system. Um, or I can assign a CSV list, which will extend the script. And I can, let's say, create 100 uh, sales orders for customers stored in the list. Or uh, what I can do else I can assign number sequence to the field. Basically, mm, sometimes when you are recording a process, like creating a purchase order, um, system will require from you identify to, to be unique. Or when you create a customer, the unique the name has to be unique. Uh, to reach this, um, this demand from the system to be unique, we use number sequences. So for each field, I'm inserting data, I can assign a um, number sequence. So with each execution system will take number sequence to the field and save it. Uh, this, will, this will let me to create a random business data in the system and it is uh, enhancing the process of uh, generation, the scripts for the system. Uh, and the last one is expression. Expression is very simple. Uh, you can set up in this case uh, like system date get or you can set up in here current user ID or um, some values, uh, some expressions that will uh, enhance your process, uh, like uh, summing up two variables into one or even three or, or more. It might be done in here. Uh, that is available for you, so if you don't want to, you can use just this one. And um, every time we do change values in the script, I need to compile. The compilation will create version, uh, which will stay in the system. So I can always go back to the first version and see how system was, uh, how system is evolving and um, what kind of actions are new. Um, so let's say today we have our process. It is going smoothly. It, uh, it requires 27 steps to be executed. But let's say half a, half a year later on, the government will release new um, some new regulation that's saying that we have to check uh, validation of the of the some some tax some tax uh, number or um, validation if the customer exists. Um, then we will need to extend this script by a few steps, and we will have uh, amount of time which was uh, needed to extend the process, which at the end will tell you how much this new regulation costs the company. Basically, uh, this solution can give you a lot of data, which is uh, unavailable right now without this, uh, without this approach. So whenever we have our script running smoothly and we have this check mark, I can click Run and I can change the automate type, which is quite simple. And I will just click here. And I can click uh, and pick, let's say, DDA, Demonstration and Documentation Assistant. 